My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. I'll turn the right way so you can fucking hear me. Come over here. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going into the basics again to start off another series about variable compression ratios. So basically what we need to understand first is why compression ratios are important. So there's kind of three bits to this video. So first, why do we compress in the first place? Well, we need a cycle. We need to basically push a piston down. Uh, and we're only going to talk about piston engines right now. Forget wankles and all the other weird shit. We're just going to talk about piston engines. Um, so why, when you push a, a piston down, we want to do this more than once. We can't just do this once and then you're 100 miles away. That'd be great. We have to keep this process going. Because that's a cycle, the piston has to come back up so we can push it back down again. So we attach it to a wheel and a crank arm so the piston goes up and down. That's number, reason number one. Reason number two is, is because you will get much more um, efficient... Um, you can extract more energy out of your fuel if you, can do, you do compression. The reason, the reason why is it's all about pressure densities. So you could get a fuel and you could just drop <laughs> a little tiny drop all the way over... Uh, you know, like a surface like this on the floor of a nice flat surface, then you could burn it. And as each little drop sets on fire, so over a massive large surface area, so our pressure, our energy density is really fucking low. You know what I mean? It's like trying to heat up the world with a lighter. You know, you're standing there going, you are heating up the world. That's not, you know, you are heating up the world. It's just your pressure, your energy density is really low. So the reason why we compress a mixture is because if we start out with a litre and then condense that down to 100 millilitres, or 10 to 1 basically, we're at 10% of what we were, then when we ignite the fuel and air mixture, that fuel and air mixture is going has got a much smaller surface area to press against, so it's going to increase the energy density, which means that the force we are actually, we're basically concentrating that force. You know, it's like doing a Hadouken in fucking, what is it? <laughs> in uh, Street Fighter. You know what I mean? You're condensing that. You're basically condensing all that energy into a smaller space so it makes it more intense. And if we can do this rapidly and keep on repeating it, we can get a lot of energy out of it. Or you can just use the same amount of fuel, spray it over a massive large area, and the energy density is really small. So it goes to say that um, it's also about flame speed as well. The fact of the matter is, is if we put all that fuel and air under pressure, and basically, instead of there being an oxygen here, you know, an oxygen molecule here, oh, we should just do that, an oxygen molecule here, or two there, and then having our fucking hydrocarbon here, you know, zigzaggy, zigzaggy hydrocarbon over here, if we can push them next to each other, like this, yeah, I'm missing out all the hydrogens, but if we can push them really close to each other, then the speed of the reaction will be a lot quicker. Again, if we can release all this energy in a small amount of time, that's our energy density is going up again. You know, basically, because instead of doing a slow burn, we're doing a quick burn. If you do a chemical reaction really, really quick, you get what we call an explosion. And you can see how much energy that can release. It releases pressure waves and all sorts, and causes loads of destruction. <laughs> But basically, if we can compress this mixture, it means our flame speed increases, which means we increase our pressure density, our energy density. And the other thing is we're also putting work in. The piston has got to come to the top for us to repeat the cycle that we just basically um, did the, you know, the, the cycle before. And if you compress, that, you, you compress that cylinder, we are then putting energy into the system. So it's not very hard to push that system over the edge for combustion to occur. So, you know, we need 280 degrees C or something like that to combust petrol, uh, gasoline. So if we compress it into a small, a smaller volume, a real small density, uh, increase the density of it, you know, basically concentrate all that energy. And then we need, and you know, and by doing that, we get up to uh, 800 and at 250 degrees, then our spark plug just basically needs to kick it off. The spark plug does not heat the entire mixture, you've got to remember that. It just starts it off there, it's the spark that's hot, and then that, um, the flame front, the reaction, the chemical reaction, 
you know, basically it expands all the way through the mixture. And the closer all these molecules are together, um, and the, the, you know, the heat that is already in the system is contained, and we're closer to this, that's why we only need a spark plug just to get it to happen. You know what I mean? Um, so, so it's all about energy densities, time, and all the rest of it. And the more of these you can do per second, the more power you are going to get, because power is a force over time. You know what I mean? So higher power means, yeah, you can do that amount of energy, you know, you can use that amount of force, but how long is it taking you to do it? If you can condense it, so your energy density is really high, then you'll go faster. You can do more work in less amount of time. So, obviously, now we know this, um, this is why fuel efficiency goes up with compression ratios. You are still burning the same amount of fuel, but how much of that fuel is being converted into pushing a piston? And if you can use higher compression ratios, Yes, you have to use more energy compressing it, but you will get that back, apart from the waste heat from actually doing it. But you will get that back, and more, because obviously there's a chemical reaction with the energy stored in your fuel. So the closer you can compress it together, the quicker your flame speeds will be, which means that when you go to higher and higher and higher and higher RPM, then you can still get a combustion, pre a combustion speed that's still quick enough to still supply you with enough energy, or more energy, to keep on accelerating. Oh, so, variable compression ratios, why would we want this? Well, when we, do, when we set a compression ratio, it is all to do with your sweat volume. So this is at bottom dead centre, and we'll call this position A, and position B is up here, and this is at top dead centre. And from here to here, so the difference between A and B, is your sweat volume and what's left in here is your basically your compression volume um, so obviously this is um, this is a physical characteristic it is basically controlled by the stroke of your crankshaft you know what I mean so there's our center there's our stroke that's there and it's there when it's there so point A to B is the same as point A to B here so it's limited or it's fixed by the size of our crankshaft and crankshafts have to be rigid <laughs> to you know to absorb all the energy and to all, all the force that's been applied to it, the torque that's been applied to it so there's so many you know but we can when your engine is sat idle so when you're sat in traffic we just need the engine to basically keep itself in a, a ready state, a ready position. There is no load on the engine really, it's just sat there and really we don't need the, the high enough compression ratio. It's only when we go to higher loads, when we're demanding more of the engine, that we could use this higher compression ratio. You know, if you have a high compression ratio engine that's sat there at idle, then it's making a hard time for itself just sat there doing nothing. You know, because it's fixed, we can't change it. And we'll just say this for argument's sake is 12 to 1. You know what I mean? Um, but we would like to change it. So when the engine's under load, when it's hard acceleration, and you put a lot of load on the engine, something like that, we'd like to change it. So basically, we are making the most of our fuel when we need it, and then we can use less fuel. Um, we can use less fuel on non-load situations with a lower compression ratio. Just make the engine take over. Now, there's many ways around this, obviously, nowadays. There's the engine cut off when it sits there for five seconds on idle. It just fucking cuts off and it restarts itself. I'll talk about that because it's not a very good system, actually. Um, but there's also the systems where if you have a V8, it all of a sudden shuts down to four cylinders, you know, and if you've got... That only really works if you can control your valves because if you can keep all your valves closed on your pistons that aren't firing then you're not putting fuel and air in there. But the other thing is, as well as you're using the, the, the compression as a spring, so you compress the mixture, but then that pressure pushes back, so you're not really losing anything apart from uh, some tiny heat losses. But, you know, um, how do we do this? That's what the next videos are going to be about. We're going to look at each individual process. Generally, what the process is, is to try and either, is to increase and or reduce and increase the distance between the head and the piston you know dynamically as the engine's running that's why it's really hard because it's as the engine's running and you need some kind of mechanism which is robust 
to you know to be able to take the forces involved in combustion all of this but also be variable and it's very hard to do and some of the ideas are fucking awesomely mental and basically stupid but they're still trying nonetheless so there's going to be a new series like I say the videos will come out soon about the different systems and some of the crazy ideas and what have you and then I, what I'll do is I'll chuck in one or two of my own ideas as well um, and the, they might have been used, I don't know, but just off the top of my head, things that I've thought of, the way you could do it. There's even a two-stroke version, which is a bit mental. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's that series. Uh, look out for them videos, and I'll see you in a bit.